Today we are seeing headlines like this, Tesla's China sales dip in February amid Chinese New Year slowdown. Going forward to beat last year's Q1, Tesla needs to average about 15,000 deliveries per week in China. This last week we got 12,500, this was just reported. Currently we are ahead of last year's Q1 which is in green. A few more countries reported deliveries. Australia is actually doing quite well this quarter. The Model 3 actually became Australia's best-selling vehicle in February. EV market share in Australia just reached an all-time high of 9.6%. The UK reported sales. The UK still has a major delivery wave that happens at the end of each quarter, so I wouldn't draw any conclusions from these numbers yet so q1 deliveries as of this moment are not looking exactly great but troy says that this second ship from china to canada will have a small positive effect of around 1700 units it seems like the ship is carrying model freeze from the guardian tesla has launched a scathing attack on australia's main auto industry lobby group accusing it of attempting to delay climate action by repeatedly making plainly false claims to the public about an Albanese government clean car policy. Roland did a poll on X as soon as Tesla FSD beta is available in Europe, I will buy it. How about Europeans? Now, there was no option for me to see the results without voting, so I just voted yes, I will buy it. I have FSD, but I'm in Canada. And someone says we will buy for our complete fleet of 4,500 Teslas. Wow. Elon Musk will be speaking at a Morgan Stanley conference tomorrow. It will be at 11.45 a.m. I am not fully sure about the time zone, but it says San Francisco here. So it's probably Pacific time. Yeah, actually, I'm pretty sure it's Pacific time because there is a specific location and that location is in California. So 99% sure, 11.45 a.m. Pacific time. Tesla Malaysia is the only Asian country to introduce a new color to its Tesla Model Y vehicle, but uh, they also have these colors in China. The new colors are ultra red and stealth gray. More V4 superchargers are being installed in the US. V4 superchargers have these longer cables, so even if you own a Rivian or a Ford F-150 Lightning, you'll have no issues charging at these charging stations without having to take multiple spots. On March 7th, there's going to be a live stream about the Model 3 with Franz, Tesla's chief designer, and Lars, Tesla's VP of Vehicle Engineering. It will be at 2 p.m. Pacific time. You may submit your questions if you have any questions for them. Go ahead and upvote the questions that you like. I want to know why were Giga castings not used in the new Model 3? And in terms of productions and what's inside the vehicle, things that we don't necessarily see, I would like to know if there are any differences between the Chinese-made Model 3 and the US-made Model 3. Look at who just took delivery off a Saba truck, Sandy Monroe. Likely, we are going to see a teardown of a Saba truck by Sandy, and I am really looking forward to it. He does incredible work. Tesla's controversial turn signals are going to ding its near-perfect safety rating. This is happening in Europe. Euro NCAP announced that it plans to crack down on the overuse of touchscreen inside vehicles. The agency said that in order to get a 5-star rating, cars will have to have physical controls for turn indicators hazard warning lights, windscreen wipers, horn, and SOS features. We know that electric can be extremely critical of Tesla sometimes, but uh, Fred writes, honestly, I don't think the force touch turn signals are too bad. It takes some getting used to like anything, but I don't know for sure that it's not as safe as a stock once you get used to it. I think if you're not used to it, definitely uh, it's a bit weird driving let's say a model 3 but i drove it and mostly it was completely fine it's only an issue if you are driving at low speeds and you need to turn the steering wheel a lot and you make one turn and then immediately you make another turn for example you go into a parking lot and then immediately you need to turn left you're not going to signal that left turn unless you are extremely used to the turning signals and you prepared yourself and you hit that turn signal just at a perfect time when the steering wheel was 
like this and not like that. So the turning signals for me are only an issue with the new Model 3 if you go very slowly. If you are in a roundabout, which is what I was really worried about, it's no issue if the roundabout has multiple lanes, which means it's a bigger roundabout and you will not turn your steering wheel by a, a lot. So you will be able to signal without any issues. But if it's a one lane roundabout, yeah, I was not really able to use my turn signals because the roundabout was so tight. But in a roundabout like that, because it's only a one lane roundabout, you don't really need to use a turning signal. I mean, I would still prefer to use it, but uh, you're not going to crash because you're not using a turning signal.